Welcome back to Deep Learning. So today we want to talk a bit more about the ideas of object detection and we will start with a small motivation on object detection and some key ideas how this can actually be performed. So let's have a look at our slides. You see this is already part three of our short lecture video series on segmentation and object detection. And now the topic is object detection. Well, let's motivate this a little bit. And the idea you remember is that we want to localize objects and we classify them. So we want to figure out where the cats are in the image and we want to figure out whether they are actually cats. And this is then commonly solved by generating hypotheses about bounding boxes. Then you resample those boxes and apply a classifier. So the main distinction of the method is how you combine and replace those steps in order to achieve higher speed or accuracy. So we can also look into our plane example and of course we are looking for bounding boxes and the bounding boxes is typically defined as the smallest box that fully contains the object in question. And this is then typically defined as a top left corner with width W and height H and some classifier confidence for the bounding box. And you can see that we can also use this for detecting the entire plane or we could also use it for parts of the plane. This is actually something where we already have a long history of different success stories. One very early success story is the Viola and Jones algorithm that was one of the earliest really well working face detectors. Here you can see the example. This was using HAR features and those HAR features were then used in a kind of boosting cascade in order to detect faces very quickly. So it was using large numbers of features that can be computed very efficiently. And then in the boosting cascade, they would select only the features that are most likely to detect a face at a given position. This was then improved with the so-called histogram of oriented gradients. And in classical methods, you had always a good feature extraction plus some effective classification. And here in that time, support vector machines were very common. Of course, there's also neural network based approaches and you can do this actually quite easily with a pre-trained CNN. So you could simply use the sliding window approach and then detect each possible window by a CNN. There's region proposal CNNs like R CNN that finds interesting image regions first and then classifies them with a CNN. And there's the single shot detectors that we talk about in the next video that do a joint detection and classification. And I think one of the most famous examples is you only look once, the YOLO. We already had that example also in the introduction. And I think it's a very nice method that does all of these detection approaches in real time. Well, the sliding window approach, you could simply take your pre-trained CNN and just move it all across the image. And then when you find an area of high confidence, you could say, okay, there is a face and I want to detect this face. Now, the big disadvantage here is that you have not just to detect the face, but the face could also be in different resolutions. So you want to repeat this process on multiple resolutions. And then you already see that detecting patch wise, this will result in a large number of patches and you have to do a large number of classifications. So this is probably not the way that we want to go. And one advantage, of course, would be that we don't need to train a new. We can simply use our trained classification network in this case, but it's computationally very inefficient. And we want to look for some ideas how to do that more efficiently. 
And one idea is, of course, that you use it with fully convolutional neural networks. And this is then the following approach. So we can think about the idea, how could we apply a fully connected layer to an arbitrary shaped tensor? And one idea would be you flatten the activations, then you run your fully connected layer, and you can get one classification result. Instead, you can reshape your weights and then use convolution, and this will produce exactly the same result. And we already discussed this when we were talking about one-by-one one convolutions. Now, the nice property here is that if we follow this idea, we can then also work with arbitrarily shaped spatial input sizes. And by using the convolution, we will then also produce a larger output size. So we kind of get away with the moving window approach, but we still have the problem that we would have to look at the different scales in order to find all of the interesting objects. This is why people have been looking at region-based detectors. So we know that CNNs are powerful classifiers, and the fully convolutional neural networks, they help to improve the efficiency, but they are still somewhat brute force. So what can we do about this? We can improve the efficiency by only considering interesting regions, like our eyes, regions of interest. So this then leads to RCNN, the regional CNN. So here you have this multi-step approach where you generate region proposals and a selective search, and then you classify the content of the region proposals with a refined bounding box. So let's look at this in slightly more detail. So here are region proposals. You generate those candidate objects by grouping of pixels with similar texture or color. And then you produce a few thousand object proposals, like 2,000 per image. And you note that this is much, much smaller than the number of possible windows. And you essentially base this on a form of segmentation. In the original RCNN paper, they were actually using a method that is called superpixels. And superpixels allow you to generate smaller and larger regions. So you can see how we increase the region size from left to right. And then we can use those regions in order to find interesting areas with another detector. And these interesting areas can then be fed into the next stage of the classifier. So the second stage is then, once we have those regions, we essentially have a convolutional neural network. And this then produces, on the one hand, a box regression that refines the bounding box. And this is then also fed as a kind of representation learning to a support vector machine that does then the final decision. So this is better than what we've seen before at that time in 2013. but it's still slow and it's not end-to-end. -end. So if we want to accelerate this, then we see that we still have problems with RCNN because we have this full forward pass for each region proposal. This means that the straining is slow and also the inference is slow. So we can share the computations when computing the feature maps because we're doing the same or similar computations all along. And then the key idea in order to improve the inference speed is that we use the region proposals on the feature maps. So what you do is you pass the entire image through the network to generate feature maps, and then you apply the region proposals to the last conf layer. So you have to resize them in order to be applied to the last conf layer. But you can essentially do that because you can predict the size of this particular layer by a reformatting of the ROIs. So the classification CNN has a fixed input size. So you use so-called spatial pyramid pooling to resample this to a fixed size using max pooling. So originally, this has been done with three different window sizes and strides. Then you essentially have this image-wise computation shared. And this gives a big speed up during the inference. 
and you already can accelerate the inference by a factor of 24 to 104. Still, you have slow training, which is not end-to-end. -end. And one reason is that we have this region proposal pooling, where you pool according to the suggestions that you have from the ROI identification. And you can do that simply with max pooling to a fixed size. And what you would do is you would use a lot of information in this step. But you can, of course, just do it in a fixed sampling and then lose the information. So this spatial pyramid pooling is used with one output map. They have some ideas to better sample the selection for the mini badges. So you can sample 128 ROIs uniform randomly. And if you do that, then typically the feature maps don't overlap. So instead, you can also do hierarchical sampling that then samples from few images, but many ROIs, let's say 64, and then you generate a high overlap. You replace the support vector machine and the regression by a softmax layer for classification and a regression layer for the bounding box fine-tuning. And then this leads to a multitask loss. And in total, the training is then nine times faster than RCNN, but we are still not real time. So we are almost end to end apart from the ROI proposals on the conf layer. So what you can do then in order to speed up further is the so-called faster RCNN. And here the key idea is that you add a region proposal network and the input is now the generated feature maps and the output are region proposals. And this is integrated into the fast RCNN. The idea here is that you define anchor boxes with different scale and aspect ratios, typically three scales and three aspect ratios. And this leads to efficient multi-scaling, so neither the image sizes nor the filter sizes need to change. You get some 4,000 box parameters plus 2,000 scores because you have the softmax for object, non-object detection. So you then have a fully convolutional end-to-end -end system, but the system is still not real-time. So let's compare those approaches. Here you can see the overview on the different architectures based on RCNN. And you see that RCNN itself was doing this selective search. And then based on the selective search that produced the regions of interest, you then do a resizing, use a CNN that is then processed by a support vector machine. And you also do a bounding box regression to refine the bounding boxes. So the fast RCNN is using the CNN feature extractor in a fully convolutional approach that you have the entire feature maps that are produced. You still have the selective search that is then generating ROIs. And you can use then the spatial pyramid pooling in order to feed your fully connected layers. And then you have the bounding box detection head and the class head that is doing this kind of multitask prediction. In faster RCNN, you go really into an end-to-end -end system. So here you have the CNN feature extraction. From these extractive features, you do the region proposals, you do the ROI pooling subsequently, and then you have the bounding box prediction head and the class head, which is much faster in terms of training, end-to-end, -end, and much faster in terms of inference. Still, we are not able to do real-time classification, which is why we want to talk next time about single shot detectors that will be able to do this trick. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I'm looking forward to see you in the next one. Bye bye.